Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Melissa. If you're just joining me here, welcome. I figured for today's video we would do some plant chores and I'll kind of take you through my afternoon a little bit. It's like 1.30 right now. And I was gonna film just a repotting video, but I'm not really in the mood to sit down and do a bunch of repotting. I have some pole extensions to do. I might do one repotting. There's a plant that I've been really wanting to just go ahead and repot. And I also need to do a little bit of watering. So I figured I would take you through maybe some of that with me. I did a little watering last night. I have to like finish watering my poles and check on a few plants and I'll kind of show you how some of them are doing. I did repot a lot of my monsteras here by the window recently. So I just kind of want to check on them and see how they're doing and all of that. I did my cabinet last night too, and I got all of my corms in there watered. Yesterday evening, I went out and bought a couple caladiums and planted those, and I planted a couple outdoor plants, and it's such a beautiful and nice day out there. I still have a lot of like repotting to do. I feel like I haven't even touched the surface now that I'm repotting a plants out of a soil that I was using. I just, I have like added to the list of repotting. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm gonna go grab a drink because I feel like I need a little something before I get started here. And we'll do some plant chores together. I think I might just drink a poppy drink. I'm just wanting some flavored water. I don't really think I want caffeine or anything. I had a coffee this morning. These are so good if you haven't tried them. This is strawberry lemon. I get these, I find these at Target. Mm, so good. <laughs> First thing I wanna do is I need to go get more water and soak some fresh BTI because I've used the ones in my watering can for I think three or four times now. And I'm gonna just finish off the rest that I have and top off my moss poles. Cause I started watering them last night, but some of them I didn't get to. And some of them didn't reach the soil all the way. So I like to get this started while I'm doing other stuff cause I can come back and refill them. And that way I'll be able to get through all of my poles. Cause if I just wait to do them at one time, sometimes water drips slowly and sometimes they drip fast so and I only have so many globes to go around see I haven't started this one yet For thickly poles, I do pretty much the same thing with. I watered these last night, but I'll just show you. So, the soil is a little bit damp. I feel like it could wait until the next like thorough pole water before I have to water it again. So I just moisten the moss, and usually for these guys, I just use the water bottle and fill it. And I try not to let them go as dry. It's easier to water these, but sometimes they still go dry. Why is this thing squawking so much? I think it has a hole in it. So I just moisten it all the way down and through. And sometimes I'll take my, when I wanna do like a thorough water, I take my water bottle and just like pour it over top and it'll saturate down all the way through but i don't want to do a deep water yet because the soil is still a little bit wet so i just have to be mindful when i'm watering these you know i just have to pay attention to the soil mostly so i did that one last night that one's fine 
Because usually I would say all of my poles dry out within like two days very easily. And when they start to get crunchy, you can hear um, like it's time to water. But sometimes my poles sit dry for like four or five days before I water them again. I really try to stick to twice a week, but depending on what's going on throughout the week, sometimes I just... I mean, sometimes I just don't feel like it. Sometimes, it, you know, like watering so many plants, as much as I do in my space, sometimes it takes a lot of effort and that's okay. Like if you don't feel like it, sometimes that's fine. And that's why I recommend, or that's why I try to split up watering into a couple days. Cause not only do I have plants in my plant room, I have plants outside now in my dining room. I have plants in a few other rooms. So it's a major task for me watering plants. I love watering, but some days, you know, you're always not in the mood and that's, that's totally fine. So since it is, what is wrong with this thing? <laughs> okay, this is driving me nuts. <laughs> I gotta go get more water. So again, like with my watering can, sometimes I'll just dump the watering can like that on the moss and moisten it but just be very careful because, you know, you can water those very easily and then you're going to risk overwatering. My Marble Queen is not the steadiest because the bottom half is still plastic. Especially when she gets top heavy when I'm watering her. She tends to lean a little bit. My Escaletto here, I'm going to have to extend, I feel like, again soon. Or just fill it with actually moss. So I'll, sometimes I'll just take my bottle like this and moisten it. But I just have to be careful because water can reach the soil again. And if it's wet, you don't really want that. That's why it's really important to have like a very aerated mix so that you don't have to worry about accidentally like letting your soil sit wet for too long. There's a new glorious leaf. I have to extend that one soon. Maybe I'll do that today. That'll like force me to get that done. I have one extra pull that I can do. That's my Marble Queen new leaf. Look at her. Isn't she gorgeous? So this one here was a foot long. So I imagine that one looks longer. I think she is longer, which is crazy. And my Splendid, I'm gonna be chopping probably in like two more leaves. And you guys saw my, I don't know if you guys saw my Cebu Blue finally fenestrated. Look at that. My Dubia is growing really fast. Mykins is doing well. And my Epi over there, I'm gonna have to extend actually soon too. Shoot, I forgot about that one. So yeah, they're doing well. My cabinet, like I said, I did this last night. I topped off all the fluval. I probably won't have to do too much in there. Today is Friday and normally I water over the weekend. I think I'm gonna wait and water Sunday. It's supposed to rain all day tomorrow, but I really wanna edit tomorrow. So I'll probably just wait and hold like watering everyone that needs watered Sunday. That way, by the time Sunday comes, my poles will need watered again probably. And my cabinet will most likely need like topped off. So Sunday, I'll probably come in here and do like a quick watering. And some plants may not need water because I've been, I try to water throughout the week too. If I minus all the moss poles, I really don't have a lot that needs watered in here and I can quickly water them. And, you know, again, some plants I don't water thoroughly, like my hanging plants. And it depends on the substrate that they're into. And it depends on the week and how warm it's been in here and all of that because sometimes I can water in their spots and I don't have to let them drain it really it just depends on each particular plant but yeah I will check and water plants later this week right, I'm gonna get my water refilled back up so I can let that soak and then I'll probably do a couple pole extensions that I want to do real quick and then we'll see kind of what else I feel like taking care of today I just got my water from outside and I'm not gonna soak, I think I'm only gonna soak three jugs. I have more jugs that I filled, but I think three will get me through the rest of my poles that I need to water and maybe a few other thirsty plants. 
And these are the dunks that I use. I only have one little donut left in this one. I just get the two pack off Amazon because it's cheaper. I would say two packs probably last me two months, I would say. I go through two donuts when I fill my jugs up and I usually change them out every two weeks. Sometimes I change them out sooner. So I would say these last me two months, which is totally worth it. I would say that's a little less than $10 a month to keep fungus gnats away. That's just the way I just see if I'm gonna have soil, then this is what works best for me. The only reason I change them out so often is because I just, I don't know, I feel like when it's diluted over and over again, I feel like it has to lose some of its strength. And since I've had an outbreak recently due to a soil I was using, I, I'm trying to use fresh donuts each time. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and just break this into four. I'll have a little piece left for my other jug. And then I just put them in a little disposable tea bag just so that it doesn't break up all over my water in my jug. It doesn't really dissolve all the way. It just kind of, it just kind of breaks up, I guess, a little bit. And so it's easier to just flip this in my watering jug. And you wanna soak for at least 30 minutes. So while this is soaking, I'll just do some other like plant chores. And these little tea bags, this is a hundred pack that I got off Amazon as well. I think you can leave the dunk in your watering can for up to 30 days. But I, I feel like, depending on how often you reuse it, I feel like at some point it's not gonna be as effective. And until I can get the gnat situation, back under control. Like I said, I'm just gonna use pretty much fresh dunk every time I, every week. Cause when I, um, when I soak, I have about six jugs right now. I did have seven, I had to toss one cause it was getting kind of gross. I will let them soak and I'll water what I can with that water. And then I'll have to refill them up again to get through the rest of my plants that need water. So each watering, I'm using the piece twice. And so by the time I water again, sometimes I'll refill it a third time, but after that it gets kind of, I don't know. I just would rather use a fresh one after that. And I water the BTI through my moss poles because I don't water the soil. I only water through the pole. Sometimes I water the soil of my thickly pole. It just depends on how often those need watered. But my big poles, I only water the moss and I want enough water to get through to the soil. And, you know, fungus gnats hover around my moss poles. If, you know, especially if I have an outbreak, if a random few get into my plant room, they're not like nesting in my moss or anything. I haven't noticed anything like that because they are attracted to that organic matter that's in soil. So as long as my soil is protected, then, you know, they can't get in there and lay their little eggs. So I'm not exactly sure how long BTI lasts once you water it in. I don't think it lasts too long and it takes like 24 hours or so to start working to kill the larvae. So you pretty much, you have to water consistently all the time so that your plants are protected because you don't want to stop and then you bring, you reintroduce a plant that has gnat larvae and then they hatch and then they start their whole little process all over again. So yeah, I think while that's soaking, I have a couple of plants here that I want to extend. This is my variegated heart leaf and my sorderoy doesn't really need to be extended just yet. So I think I might just add some moss into this one since I have to wet moss to extend this one. This one I should have extended a little while ago. And I think I might go ahead and extend the 
Gloria sets behind me there because I do have one pole that's out in my garage that I don't have to like do anything. It's already just done. But my epi that I have to extend over there, it's gonna have to wait a little bit longer. I do plan on chopping a few other poles. I'm gonna redo my one that I made nine feet. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm gonna redo that one and chop it back. And then my other one, What's the other one? Oh, my campus sport to autumn is just one vine. I'm gonna chop that one back too. So I'll have a couple extra poles from chopping those that I can reuse so that I don't have to make new wire poles. Not wet too much right now but we'll see how much so this one here I'm just gonna fill with moss to the top this is my sort of Roy so this one recently had root rot in an old soil mix I was using and I caught it in time it has a pretty good root system in the moss already so I feel like that's what saved this plant honestly it didn't really shock too much. I haven't noticed new soil roots yet because it's only been, actually I do. There's a new root on the bottom right there, peek it out. I repotted it into my mix. It's probably been mm, maybe like eight or nine days, something like that. And it had spider mites at that time too. All of my phyllo seemed to have them. So I'm glad it, it didn't really shock too much and that it's growing new leaves and stuff. And new roots, this new leaf here in the middle is gonna be so nice. The last node is right here. So technically I, I can let it go another probably couple leaves until I need to actually repot it. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill with moss though to the top. In the meantime, I um, fill these with moss usually to the top from, or from here on out. It depends. I just feel like it's easier to just go ahead and fill it to the top. That way you don't have to worry about it later. I did one spider mite treatment with Azamax and it took care of them. I haven't noticed any new mites. The leaves are still really shiny from the Azamax that I use. They're like really sticky still. All right, so that took care of that one. Do you hear it? <laughs> I actually think there's a piece of um, mosquito dunk stuck in here. All right, well, since that thing is being annoying, let's not use that one. <laughs> We're just going to use this one. I just have to watch the amount of water that I put through these ones when I don't want to water the soil. I imagine a few more days I'll be able to water it again, but it makes me happy knowing that there's like a healthy root peeking out. So that one will be good. And this one here we want to extend. So my variegated heart leaf, I grew from just one leaf and I have cut this plant multiple times before I even put it on a pole. I took several cuttings on the pole and did, and I have several growing up here. So, the last set of nodes are like right here, which if it goes any higher, I'm not gonna be able to extend it. So we're gonna build our pole and I feel like I do this a hundred times. So I'll just speed this part up.
Okie dokie, so we have our new pole. I feel this one a little too full of moss, but that's okay. It is very plump, a very plump pole. <laughs> So to extend these, you push them down in the middle. So you want to bend this out and slide this right down inside. Make sure the soil flaps are down, are right here. I'm going to slide it down. until you can push it in right here on the side. There's a little connector piece. You just push it into the soil flaps and you'll hear a click. There it goes. I didn't push hard enough. So one more time. was a little bit more stubborn for some reason. And so it's connected. I think it was like hitting one of these aerial roots in the front. All right, they're that easy. That's why I love them because you literally just have an instant pull. You don't have to worry about making anything. It's just done. And I just went ahead and filled it, you know, to the top with moss because it's going to climb pretty fast. And that way, you know, you don't have to worry about filling it at a later date. I find these easier to fill when you're making them rather than trying to stuff moss down into here. Oh, it's going to look so nice when it gets taller. I love this new leaf here. It's a little bit bigger than the rest. Do you see? That is beautiful. And then I'm just going to run a little water down here to moisten the other moss. I like to turn it on the side a little bit so I'm not getting the soil wet. You can see the level here, the water level. That's all I'm gonna water. And they're pretty stable. This is only two layers and I don't have it in any other pot other than just the plastic nursery pot. All right, that one is all done. I'm gonna grab my wire pole out of the garage and moisten it. And we will extend our glorious real quick too because I've been meaning mm -hmm. to do that. And I figured since we're extending some poles, we'll just extend that one. Don't say hi. This is Star. She makes a rare appearance. My husband just went to go play golf with our neighbor and his brother. So she's like, she doesn't have him. <laughs> I'm trying to think, I think I want to go ahead and get her out of that mix. Yeah, I tend not to repot moss poles because they can stay in this pot until I go to chop them because you know they they don't grow like they don't grow enough roots to need to be repotted before then basically if that makes any sense. So the only reason I'm doing it is because I don't like the substrate. Well once I go once I go to chop this glorious a lot of the small leaves here I'm not going to keep I'll probably end up like propping and taking off the pole. And maybe I can just sell the cuttings or get rid of the cuttings. 
from like, I don't know, like here down. Because once I do another chop, I usually chop at the top of the new pole. So whatever, like this growth and beyond is the growth that, I, that I'll keep. And then the rest of it, I won't be keeping more than likely. <laughs> So the base, I'm going to be chucking this nasty soil. It has this little small plant on the side here, which I might go ahead and take off because it's not really, it's not really serving a purpose because by the time I go to pot this plant or, you know, chop it, it won't be necessary to keep that. And some of these roots may even be rotted, you know, who knows? I wouldn't be surprised because this plant has so many new roots in the mold. It's basically, it doesn't even really need these soil roots that much. It's basically just surviving on the roots in the pole. Yeah, we're gonna pluck this little baby off. You know, this mix actually was my mix. This this isn't, I thought it was the other mix, but it's not. So I really didn't even need to do this. Maybe I just put some of it on top to fill it in a bit more. Yeah, the roots are okay. Yeah, I didn't even really need to do this, so that's okay. We will use this mix and pot up this little baby plant in a separate pot with that. And I'm actually going to, this pot has a lot of algae growth, um, which makes it hard to see the roots sometimes. I'm just gonna clean this since I'm gonna reuse the same pot. Cause I wasn't actually, I wasn't even introduced um, to soul soils until later last summer so it makes sense that she would be in my mix because I potted these up shortly after I moved and like I think it was like April May time period how my mix is on the floor down here so she is mostly going to be repotted into an aeroid mix which will not contain hardly any soil. It'll be just a little bit of soil, but mostly aeroid. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see the difference in this mix or not. It is so much more chunky and aerated. All right, I'm just gonna water this in just slightly just to stabilize the pole a little bit. Water will literally run straight through here. Yeah, it's running out on the table now. <laughs> This is extremely free flowing, which I need for moss bowls. Okay. Oh. So now that we have her base done, I will back you out and then we will extend her. So I'm just sliding right over top.
I need to fill this a little bit with moss. I always forget to do that. I said I wasn't gonna make a mess today, but I didn't wanna do too much of a messy project and I'm making a disaster in here. Anytime I'm dealing with moss, it's gonna be a disaster. I try to make it look glamorous, but it's not glamorous. <laughs> My moss pole wall is feeling very overwhelming again because I've extended a lot of poles recently. She is back in her spot. She looks so good. Let me back up a little bit, far away. Leaning tower of poles over here. It's a beautiful sight. Look at those leaves, that Marble Queen especially. I'm obsessed. Definitely happy. I'm glad I repotted it. I guess I didn't need to, it's fine, but she looks really good. I'm excited to watch her climb more. The newest leaf did seem a little bit small for some reason, so I don't know if she got too dry. I mean, she's still hardening, so she could very well be just as big as that one, but we'll see. She'll probably work on another one shortly after. This one definitely grows slower than my Splendid. My Splendid and her, I started at the exact same time, and my Splendid is almost at the top of the extension. And these leaves have sized up really well. So yeah, between the two of them, this one definitely grows faster. But the leaves are, I don't know, I just, I feel like I can't really pick between them. I love the velvety leaves and the veining on this one. But then the glorious, how the new leaves come in. I don't know, this one's definitely, you know, crossed with the Chai is down here, <laughs> the Gloriosum. So this one definitely resembles the Gloriosum. Oh, it's so pretty, it's so hard to choose. I'm just going to pot this little baby up quickly that I took off the pole. Yeah, I won't keep, I won't keep this little guy. Rid of that mushy stem there. Hey Chai, what you want? <laughs> you guys can't see him. What do you want, buddies? Huh? So I'm just gonna use the soil that was on the pole because um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's my mix, so it'll be fine to pop this little guy right into here. And I'll just put him on that shelf in the other bedroom of plants that I'm not keeping and like random props. There, that's just done.
You're so cute. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think what else I want to do. I have to top off my poles again. Some of them are like, mm, I probably need one more water through, one or two. And then I did my cabinet. I'm not going to worry about my cabinet until this weekend. I was going to check my Monsteras. I think these other plants will be fine to wait until like Sunday. This isn't like a plant update or anything yet. So my Aria is doing okay. You know, the bottom leaves are very curled. I think that one's going to go. And I feel like she's actually going to push a new leaf sometime once she stabilizes. I haven't watered her yet again. So I think she's getting dry. Like the soil's pretty much all the way dry. My mix dries out you know, at a decent amount of time. So I feel like I can water her again this weekend. I repotted all my Monsteras the same day, so they're probably getting ready to need water again, probably by Sunday. And all of my Monsteras had rot, even my ties. So we'll see how they do. They seem okay. The soil seems fine. I'm not gonna water it yet. Some of my alocasias might be getting thirsty, which I think they'll be fine to wait until this weekend. I think pole-wise, I'm pretty good right now. I think I have to do probably one extension soon, and I'll have to do that epi soon. But I think pole-wise, my Marble Queen and my Splendid are the next big chopping projects. But I feel like I have a couple more, two to three more leaves each before I chop those. So I feel like those will be okay for a little while. Hi. Hi. <laughs> my love. Hey, I'm sleeping outside. It's so nice out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was wanting to take care of my Marantas today, so maybe I'll do the two sad ones that were attacked by flat mites. I want to repot them and pretty much just start over with them and prop them because they have a lot of yellowing leaves, you guys. They have been, I'll like take off all the yellow leaves and then a week later, they'll be just as many. They're just very sad. I have one that's doing really well. Well, a few of them and the rest are just not doing well. It's been really bugging me seeing all those yellow leaves again. So I think I will take care of those real quick and then probably end this video. I'll clean up this mess real quick. She's down here eating my tripod. Don't eat my tripod, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I wanna clean up this mess and then I will um, take you guys out there and we will take care of those Marantas real quick cause it's really been bothering me. I have to show you guys something. So I'm in the middle of cleaning up my mess real quick. Do you see Luna in my dirt over here? Luna, why are you in my dirt? Why are you in my dirt, girlfriend? Luna cannot be cozy. What, what are you doing, crazy? Why are you in my dirt? <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> There's been a little change of plans. I was getting ready to tidy up. My husband called. They're almost done with golf. So he wants to go downtown with um, his brother. So we're all gonna get together and go downtown and eat. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do one Maranta real quick and then clean up this mess because he's gonna be here in like 20 minutes. So. This is one of my really sad flat mite Maranta victims. It is growing new shoots in the middle here. It has a happy vine, but it has a lot of unhappy vines. So I'm basically just going to repot this into a smaller pot and I'm going to get rid of everything that is yellow, brown, and not happy. I also am going to spray with Azamax one more time. It's a miticide. I don't really recommend sulfur for 
flat mites. I mean, it's okay for certain plants, but all of my plants, my calitheas, and I don't know if it was just because they're a sensitive plant genus, just like Maranta, I felt like some of my plants were a little bit more sensitive to the sulfur. So I'm just using Azamax pretty much now for plants that had flat mites. I sh I'm sure she's pretty root bound in here. I think this plant has been in here a while, but I'm only gonna keep the healthy, the healthy plant. And there might be a couple that are healthy. Like here's a healthy piece. I'm just gonna leave all the healthy pieces to the side. And the rhizomes, the little potatoes in the soil, those like new shoots and roots will grow from them. So I don't want to like completely get rid of all those. I just basically want to just keep the healthy stuff. Here's another healthy part. And I don't know if there's any more flat mites on this plant. I honestly, I haven't scanned. I've been afraid to check. This one is mostly reverted, it looks like. So I don't know if I want to include this one. I might just include it in there. This one is dried up. We're gonna get rid of that one. This is dead. Yeah, this one's broke, so we're gonna have to propagate this strand in water. I actually might prop this in fluval, this little piece. is basically dead. I'm going to cut that back. So I do have two little nubs coming out of the soil right here. That is a new growth. We have lots of little tubers in this root ball. So what I'll probably do is just plant this and then anything that decides to root out of these tubers will root. Here's another little spike. So they basically have three little spikes and the rest of this is tubers. And this will be our trash bin. Ooh, I have the cutest little container of fluval that I wanna do that. One of those thrifted pieces, that is gonna be perfect. So I need my mix. So the three buds that have all the tubers, we're just going to plant them right down in here. And then we're going to plant these together down in here. Hopefully I will get my variegated Maranta growing back again. Then we will save my other Maranta for another day.
And with our Azamax, we are gonna give a spray just in case there's any residual mites. This is the happy growth, so I'm thinking there's probably not anything, but. You never know. All right, we have our little happy growing Marianta hopefully back. And Fluval. I am I have to open a new bag of Fluval. I'm just gonna scoop a little bit out and then plop our Maranta cutting down in there. I'm gonna give this a spritz too. So this cute little glassware that I thrifted is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna fill this little thing with Fluval. I have been dying to use this. I was gonna use it for an alocasia. But this Maranta is gonna be so cute. Down in here, I'm dying. Oh shit, making such a mess. I feel rushed because I know my husband's on his way home and as soon as he gets home, he's gonna want me to wanna leave. So now I feel rushed. Oh my goodness, okay, I need more water. Okay, that's what we have. Our little Maranta prop and this cute little vessel in Fluval. And I'm gonna have to, it's got like a dirt mess. I'm gonna clean that. And that's what she looks like dripping an Azamax. Oh, I gotta let that dry. <laughs> this was chaotic. Oh my gosh, the mess, you guys. All right, my, everything's about to go dead. My volume mic is about to die. Everything is low. <laughs> so that was stressful, this last little bit. But thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon. I felt like I got stuff accomplished. I'm happy with what I was able to get done, but I am gonna clean up this mess and head to dinner. Thank you guys so much for watching and for being here. I appreciate you guys so much and I will talk to you guys later.